All right, let's get into it. So today we're going to look at drugs and solubility, how we deliver drugs to the body and how the solubility of it will impact that. So basically, what are drugs first? Basic, drugs are anything that's medication. We're going to use the word drugs, but medication equals drugs in this case. Um, and a drug is a chemical substance which changes the physiological state of the human body. Um, there are different types. For example, there are analgesics, antihistamines. There are also your antibiotics, your hormone replacement therapy, vaccines, and there are more. Um, and there are uses. Basically, they can be used for prevention, treatment, or diagnosis of different um, diseases and conditions. Now, when we talk about drugs, we have to talk about absorption. So basically, it is how we get that, that drug into our bloodstream. And this is dependent on the solubility of the drugs. So high solubility equals a quick absorption. Um, now, basically, the drug also needs, needs to be soluble, but it also needs to be stable. Uh, it needs to be stable enough anyway till it reaches the point of absorption or the active side. So, drug design considerations. Basically, we need to know what the, that it's soluble when it reaches a specific pH. For example, if it's in the stomach, it needs to be soluble at a high pH. If you want it to be absorbed, sorry, low pH. If you want it to be absorbed in the small intestine, we need it to be soluble at um, a slightly alkaline pH. So even if it is dissolved, it still needs to be chemically active. Now remember, some salts, when they dissolve, they break into separate parts. Um, is the drug harmful in some locations? For example, there are some drugs which are harmful in the stomach. So they get in something called enteric coated tablet, tablets, so that they make it all the way through the stomach, undissolved, and then they start to break down in the small intestine. So you, the way you would do that is you would make it soluble in the high pH, I should say high pH. Um, all right, these factors basically affect the method of delivery. So that's what the rest of this lesson is going to talk about. Um, so what are the different methods of delivery? Basically, um, they need to get to the active site, okay? They need to get or site for action. The active ingredient needs to get where it has to act and be in still a chemically usable place. So there are different ways to do it. You can give drugs orally. Um, you can give drugs intravenously, but in, we'll come back to this. This is the last one I'm going to look at because it's the longest. Um, you can give it as a topical cream. Um, you can give a sub subdermal implant or dermal patches. These are also known as um, transdermal because they go across um, the dermis. Dermis means skin. So intravenous, let's have a look at this. We've probably all been here. Um, basically, the drugs are introduced directly to the bloodstream via a catheter. So there's a needle that goes in and there's a cannula or catheter around it. Um, the needle is then pulled out. Okay, so as the needle is pulled out, the catheter stays in the arm. And that gives a nice stable thing to inject drugs into the body. Um, it is a rapid delivery system and it goes directly into the bloodstream. You might use this when you've got some pretty nasty infections and you need a lot of antibiotics into the body quickly, uh, very, very quickly. The drugs need to be water-soluble. That's really important because remember here, we're not dealing with something, it's going to go into blood, which is a watery medium. Um, then we've got topical treatments. Basically, these creams are water, so we've got creams, which are water-based, ointments, which are oil-based, and they're placed directly on the skin. Um, all of the active drugs need to be soluble in either water or oil. Um, and the drugs, they'll be absorbed through the skin. It's mostly used for skin conditions or burns. Then we have the dermal patches. Now these are patches that exist in the skin. And it's really important that you understand what each of these different areas do. So you've got the sticky film that goes on. This here, um, there's an inner release layer and the skin goes on the bottom there. Then you have a separating layer which basically contains the drug. So the drug is actually contained in this here, the drug polymer matrix. Now, what happens is that gets put on your skin and it will start to release it slowly through there. It bypasses the digestive system altogether. So drugs straight through the skin. Um, there are several advantages to this. One, um, you can use drugs that won't survive the digestive system. So if there's a drug that will be broken down as you take it um, orally, then that won't work, so you can get it through the skin. It's the slow and steady release um, to the bloodstream. This is really important sometimes, but there are disadvantages. One, 
there are a limited number, this is the main one, there are a limited number of small molecules that can pass through the skin into the blood. There's not a lot that can do it. Um, it's really useful in stuff like your nicotine patches, hormone replacement therapy, a little bit. Um, then we've got the subdermal implant. It's a similar thing, but instead it's injected beneath the skin or in the dermis. So there are advantages. One, it's a slow release. It's not peaky, okay? It doesn't, you know, get spikes of the drug work. It works evenly over a long time. You're able to administer larger molecules. You don't have to worry about it being able to absorb through the skin. There is disadvantages, however. It is invasive, which means there is a minor risk of infection. It's really useful, though, for hormone replacement therapy or long-term chronic conditions. Um, now we're going to go to the big one. We're going to talk about oral delivery. So there are different types of oral drugs, okay? There are liquid suspensions, liquids and suspensions, and these usually only release the drug in the stomach. They're very simple. Um, there are tablets, which are the most common, and we're talking about the powdery tablets here. We're not talking about capsules. We'll get to those in a second. They're most common for several different reasons. One, for the science of it, so um, they, they work, and economic, they're super cheap. So they're easy and cost-effective, and they contain an active ingredient, some filler, which is inert, often can be a sugar, lactose, something like that, lubricant, um, possibly colors and flavoring. Um, they rapidly dissolve because the filler is often a disintegrant, which means it breaks down very easily. So they rapidly dissolve in the stomach. Now we're talking here starch, cellulose, or lactose. Lactose is really common, particularly when you've got like a white tablet that doesn't taste very sweet, that's lactose. Um, the tablets break down. So this is how it works. Your tablet, which is a solid, that's what that S means there, um, it gets into your stomach where it breaks down into powder slash granules. And still a solid there. Then it will dissolve, which means it's going to become aqueous. That's what that means. And after that, it's able to be absorbed. Now, you can also have enteric coated tablets. Um, these are coated with a cellulose acetate phthalate. That's a phthalate. Um, and this is soluble at a pH above 5.8. That's not 75.8. That is a, a greater than symbol. So these guys are soluble at a pH greater than 5.8, which you'll find in the small intestine. So they remain intact through the stomach. They don't dissolve in the stomach at all. Uh, this is why you should not cut up your tablets, by the way. You shouldn't cut up tablets. You shouldn't crush them. You shouldn't chew them. You take them. You swallow them whole. Because what they're designed to do is like they, they're going to break down somewhere where they need to break down. They don't, that's a specific thing that's happening. Um, they dissolve the alkaline environment of the small intestine and then they're absorbed. Often here we'll look at drugs which are actually harmful for you in your stomach. Like they'll cause ulcers, tears in the stomach. And then we've got capsules. Um, your capsules are a hard, soft gelatin, hard or soft gelatin um, coating and it dissolves slowly. And these are for a slower release. So if you want like a rapid pain relief, it would not be in a capsule. So we want to look at factors affecting oral drugs. Okay, we need to look at several factors when we're designing our drugs. Otherwise, they become useless. Uh, for example, solubility in, in water. If it's not soluble in water, it might not be able to enter the bloodstream. Um, able to survive a low pH. If... The drug, if the active drug is digested by the stomach, it won't make it into the bloodstream. Um, is it need to be able to survive in an alkaline environment in the duodenum? If it's digested or broken down in the small intestine or the duodenum, if that's where it gets released, it won't enter the bloodstream. So you might want some things to be broken down in the stomach, sorry, to be digested. You, like a regular tablet, you probably want to be absorbed in the stomach. Enteric coated, you want it to be absorbed in the duodenum. Um, so it needs to be able to withstand digestive enzymes. Now, basically, there's this thing called the first pass effect. Drugs made inactive by enzymes as they pass through the liver. Um, this is the first place it goes to. And if that happens, the drug won't work. So we need to make something that's able to make it through there. And if it can't make it through there, it might need to go in intravenously, um, subdermal implant, etc. All right, thanks for hanging in there. Um, check your notes, make sure they make all the sense in the world. And if they don't, you feel free to ask a question in the comments below. We'll get to you as soon as we can.